Hey everyone, it's Chris here again. Just a quick video today. I wanted to show how to do debugging with Visual Studio Code, specifically debugging uh, C or C++. It can be used for many different languages. I just thought I would try C or C++ debugging just because I kind of like C or C++. It feels interesting sometimes to code against the bare metal. Uh, Visual Studio Code is a nice little editor I've been using recently. It's, it's kind of like partway between just a text editor and a full IDE but it, it's actually very capable. So to start with, I've got just a little C++ project that I've created here. It's just got a, uh, a main entry point. It has a class. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open that up with Visual Studio Code. So there we go. So Visual Studio Code has mounted my directory and it's a very very simple little project. Uh, I initialize a person object and I write out hello and I get that person's name and then I delete the person. Very very simple. Uh, we can go ahead and look at the actual person class, the code. As you expect, there's like nothing here. There's a, a constructor and there's the get the getter for the person's name and the class definition. Very very simple. But I'd like to be able to run this now a nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it has an integrated terminal. Uh, that's open by going to view and selecting integrated terminal or you can hit the control back tick. So that's very handy. Um, I'm gonna I think use my normal terminal just because the text is a lot larger it's easier to see. So to begin with the way this works is by default out of the box Visual Studio Code doesn't have C or C++ support baked in. And in fact it's even saying down here we recommend you install the C or C++ extension. Well I could just click install right there but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the extensions section here just to show you and I'll just search for C++. And there is one here uh, created by Microsoft. Now it's still in preview, but that's fine. It seems to work just, just fine. You can hit install. So it's installed. I'll have to hit reload. Okay, and now you see I have it enabled. And it's downloading the uh, extensions. So with that, I should now have installed the actual like debugging bridge to be able to use the debugger with C or C++ programs. So how does it work? If I actually go and hit the debugger, you notice here there are no debug configurations. Well, I can go ahead and add a configuration. And I think this is really clever the way they've done this. You can select uh, a configuration for whichever language you you have installed. I've installed debugging for C++ specifically for GDB. I'm on Linux. I do have GDB installed for debugging C or C++. I'll click that. And so what I end up with is a JSON file. So I think it's really, really clever what they've done. If I actually go back to my project, you notice they've created a .vs code subdirectory and there's a launch.json file in there. So I really like that because it's, it's rather easy to go ahead and edit this to do whatever we need it to do. So notice it's going to debug a specific program and I can edit the program name here. I will just take their suggestion And there's some other things that you can do in here. There's stop at entry. So you can actually like make it immediately hit a breakpoint as soon as the program begins. I'm just going to leave it off. Uh, but that's the configuration for my debugger. If I go back to the debugger now, you'll notice that GDB launch is now selectable in the debug. Of course, if I run it, it's not going to work. I haven't compiled this thing yet. So it's like, that didn't work. That's fine. I head back to my terminal. So, as I said, here's my little program. I'm going to use G++ to compile this because it is a C++ program. And I'm going to specify the minus G option. Minus G includes debugging information into my, uh, my output file. I'll just compile everything in here. And that gives me an a.out file. And there's, there's the program running. 
But we head back over to Visual Studio Code. Of course, I'm telling it to run a.out from my workspace program folder. So head back to the file system. I already do have a breakpoint on this right here. You of course can um, you can directly click on these or you can hit F9. That's the shortcut. Of course all the debugging shortcuts are in here. You're obviously going to want to learn the key shortcut. So if I want to debug this guy, I just launch the debugger. Okay, and it's actually hit my breakpoint. You see the call stack here. There isn't much to say. I'm just in the main main function so far. Uh, and I do see what was passed in, which was basically nothing. My person right now is probably pointing at garbage because I haven't actually uh, initialized the person yet. I'm going to step into the constructor. So like, I can either click step in or I can hit F11. So here now I'm in the constructor. You see I'm in the, the call stack. I went from main to the person. I can bounce back and forth, of course. Um, and so I passed in the name. So I think this is probably uh, encoded. But if I expand this guy, you see now that the name is actually set to what was passed in in the, uh, in the class itself. We have the name set. So that's kind of interesting. I can step out. And I can continue. So again, this is going to evaluate person get name. I could step into that or I could step over this statement entirely. I'll step into it. And it's going to return this name. So again, I'm in the call stack. So I'll just let it go. So very briefly, that is how the debugger works. Now, some little nuances. If you go and look at the uh, C and C++ programming of Visual Studio Code page on the visualstudio.com website, it does say the extension does not include a C++ co compiler or debugger. So this is just using the pre-existing debugger that's on the system. In my case, it's GDB. I happen to have GCC, G++, GDB installed because I'm running on Linux. And it actually says on Linux, you're probably going to be using GCC. On Windows, you can use MinGW W64. So that's like a, it's a bash shell type environment for Windows. Clang for Xcode on Mac OS. So as long as you have one of these installed, you need to make sure your compiler executable is on your platform path so the extension can find it. In other words, uh, in my terminal, you know, I just hit, I just said G++, or I could have said GCC if it was a C program, GDB. They're on my path. So because they're on my path, Visual Studio Code can find them. So if I was in a, on a different environment, I just need to make sure these programs were appropriately on, on my path. So that's basically debugging in Visual Studio Code. It can support different languages as well. Um, Java is supported as well, which is, is kind of super cool. So I, I recommend just playing around with Visual Studio Code. It seems to be a great little IDE. So thanks, guys, for uh, watching this video. If you like my stuff, you can go ahead and like it, if, or you can, uh, you can subscribe, too. Thank you very much.